Hi everyone, it's Darlene. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Peerless watercolors, which are all the rage right now, but believe it or not, they have been around for over a hundred years. Um, the watercolors themselves are pieces of paper, um, and so there's this very intense, concentrated color that has been laid on top of this paper fabric that's been specially designed to release color whenever it comes in contact with water or any kind of water soluble solution. Um, and the packaging is actually the packaging that they used back in 1885 when the company started and the little pallets here are made today with the same process that they were made, handmade process that, that they were made with um, way back when the company started. So I'm going to, in this video, talk a little bit more about these colors and then I'll uh, go through how to use them and then I'll share with you how I store them. Okay, so a little bit more about these colors. Um, they're very concentrated and you would think on a little piece of paper that you would go through this pretty quickly, but I can tell by my initial use of these watercolors that it's gonna take a pretty long time for me to get through this strip. Um, so they're very concentrated and also they're convenient so you can cut pieces and, and take them on the go You can store them easily because they're flat um, As far as and well, let me show you how I store mine really quickly and I'll get more into the details of my storage But I just cut little strips and then I labeled them and then I showed how I watercolored them Anyway, so you could just take this on the go really easily but uh, the best thing about these watercolors, honestly, is the quality. They're artist quality watercolors. They blend just amazingly well. They're beautiful. Um, you can layer them and it gives a great, nice, blended artist effect. Now let me talk a little bit about the pricing of these watercolors. So this package, which is the basic package, comes with 15 colors uh, in two and a half by six and a half inch strips. I've already cut an inch off here. Um, and these are the basic colors for $12.99. Uh, and then I went ahead and purchased the bonus pack, which these sheets are a little smaller. I've already cut them in half and stored them, but originally they were two by two, so they're just squares of color. And there's 40 in here for, I purchased them for $28.99. And um, I feel like it was worth it to buy all of them because I am already using a lot of the colors in this bonus pack. So anyway, not too bad pricing wise uh, to get these two together and then you end up with 55 beautiful colors. So uh, let me talk next about how to use these watercolors. Okay, so what you need to use the Peerless watercolors, you need to either use a brush with a cup of water, which works just fine, um, but I prefer to use uh, a water brush or an aqua, aqua painter. Um, I have three different ones. Two of them are in a set by Stampin' Up. It's a barrel of water in this plastic tube and you squeeze the tube and the water will come out the tip, which is just a brush here. Um, the Stampin' Up set comes with two different sizes, a wider tip and a finer tip. And then I also purchased a Ranger Aqua Painter water brush and it has a much um, thicker brush and so this is what I use for backgrounds and bigger areas. So you'll need that. You really just need one but I, just, I have multiple. And then you need some watercolor paper. Now you can use regular paper. Um, it'll still work but it's not going to blend as well as if you were to use the watercolor paper. So if you're a beginner I recommend um, getting the watercolor paper because it'll blend better and you won't get frustrated with um, just learning how to watercolor. So here's the brand that I use. I use the Strathmore watercolor paper in 90 pound. Um, so it's kind of on, a, on the thinner side and I like that because then I can layer it on a card. Okay, and then I've also pulled two of my colors. I store them on these little palettes and I just pulled two of them to show you. And so let me go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of my brushes here and I can tell, I kind of test it out on my finger to see how much water is coming out because it'll vary depending on, depend on how much you've squished it or not. But um, you really don't need much. So I'm just going to barely kind of touch it in here. Actually, let me zoom in. Okay. So I'm going to take my, by the way, don't touch this with any water on your hand because it'll get everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to barely touch it in here. 
and that's what comes out. Um, and you can see how beautiful the color is. I mean, I barely touched it. Uh, with an aqua painter, you can just, I grab a tissue and I just kind of wipe it off and then the blue will come off and it's ready to go with the next color. So I'm just gonna touch this with my aqua painter and then, see I don't have as much water now. Now see the water's coming out, I'm squeezing it a little bit. So if you want darker color, you have less water. So I had just wiped it so most of the water had come off. And I'm gonna squeeze it just a tad and pull some water off and that's when I get really vibrant color or I can squeeze it even more, squeeze my pen even more, and then it'll be become much more diluted. So that's where you kind of have to be created, creative, I'm sorry. Let me pull a little bit more from the blue. See how dark you can get it, or as you squeeze and get more water, it'll get lighter. Anyway, so that's how they work, and you can tell how beautiful they are. Now let me grab, um, a color to go with this pink. Okay, so now I've got this purplish color called Heliotrope. And um, you can also lay down some color first on your paper, pull it up, and then put it down in there. And that gives you a totally different effect. Um, but if I wanted to blend this with some pink, let's say, grab my pink up here, pull some off. Right next to it, and you can just sort of blend them together. Now, I generally wouldn't blend these two colors together, but as you can see, you can blend them together, and it goes from the purple to the pink. Now, I actually create. I'm posting a video today um, of this card, and I'm, I talk about. I go through the steps of creating this cat and how I colored the cat. And with this one, I used just two colors in the cat body, and you'll see how I was able to make darker and lighter versions of each color to create this kind of perception of shadow. So um, I'll have a link to this video in my video description on YouTube and also on my blog so you can go directly to that and see how I color this cat. Um, but anyway, so you can see how these colors just blend so easily and you didn't get any line in between the two of them. So it's just beautiful. Okay, well let's say um, you make a mistake, and I'll show you how forgiving these are. Uh, so I'm going to put some water down right here, and I'm going to add some purple to it. And I realize that, oh gosh, that's just too much purple. I could take um, just a tissue and pull up the water, the color, and see it went right back to light purple, and I can start over. Um, and I can also add water to lighten, um, add water and dab again to take it away. And in my video with the cat, I actually made a few mistakes, so uh, you can learn from the mistakes that I made. Anyway, um, I absolutely love the vibrancy of these colors um, and highly recommend them. And they just blend so beautifully, especially if you're using the watercolor paper. Okay, so let me uh, show you how I store my watercolors. Okay, so here is the book that I have my Peerless Watercolors in. My daughter made this cover for me. Um, it's just, it's a, called a presentation book, and it's from uh, Staples. I bought it for like $3.50. Here's the co cover that originally came with it so you can see what it is. It contains just six sleeves, plastic sleeves inside that's, that are permanent, so you can't put more in there and you can't take any out. Um, but this worked perfectly for putting my colors into. So... I'll open this up, turn it sideways, and my first page it has just my, let's see, the reds. Okay, so what I've done, I'll pull one of these off. This is a three inch by one and a half inch piece of Nina Solar White cardstock. Okay, now you could use uh, watercolor paper if you want to do that, but it was cheaper for me to use this, so I just used this. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to cut out the watercolor in strips of one inch by two inch. So the long strips, you just kind of cut the edge off, and then those two by twos, you're just going to cut them in half. Um, and so I just adhered them to my Nina cardstock with some tape runner. And then I wrote the name of the color at the top. And then I took an aqua painter, and I picked up some color, and I colored the side over here so I can see what the color looks like when you watercolor with it because a lot of these, as you can see, 
this doesn't look anything like that. So you really need, it's necessary really, to have these palettes uh, when you buy these Peerless watercolors. Um, so after I had created all of these, I laid them out on my table and I ordered them. So I put all the pinks and then the reds and then the oranges, et cetera, et cetera, in the color of the rainbow. Now, next I took a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, which is what this is, and I laid them all out like this, all the ones that I was gonna have on one sheet. Then each one I picked up, and let me grab this, Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I love this stuff. So what I did was I just drew a squiggly line of this. And then I picked up the next one, which I had just laid here, okay? And then I did another squiggly line. And so when it was all over, all of my palettes were off to the side and I had all these glue squigglies. And I let that dry overnight. And now what I'm able to do is put them, I just have to lightly touch it and it sticks. And then when I'm ready to use it, I just pull it off and I use it and then I can put it right back. And so these, this is just a great way to store because you can put them all together, but yet you can remove them all and you can have the name with it and the watercolor with it and I just love the way it's worked out. So anyway, with all 55 colors, I had one sheet. So I put, I actually, this might be a little confusing. Here is the plastic sleeve, the first page of this presentation booklet. So I actually can see the sleeve where you can put the paper in, where it was designed to go in. And I adhered my uh, Nina page, the whole cardstock piece, on top of, so I didn't slide it in. I wanted it to lay on top. You could slide it in if you wanted to, but I felt like it was going to be easier to use if it was just on top, because then I had quick access and I didn't have to pull it out every time. Then what I did was I left a blank one so that if it's wet, if I had just used it, I can put this on top and it wouldn't affect the page after it. So then my next one is exactly the same way. And I stopped at the end of the yellows and started a new page with the greens. Um, so again, I skipped that one page and then I adhered my Nina to the open sleeve, the top of the open sleeve. So I could have put paper in here, that's what staples want you to do, but I'm putting it on top. And then when I turn that, exactly on the other side is where I start my greens. And so I have greens and I'm starting the blues. Again, blank in between to make sure that if it's wet, it doesn't affect the other side. And then I finished up with the purples and then some browns and a couple of blacks. And it worked out to be right to the edge here. So when I turn the page, again, it's on top of the sleeve. There's a sleeve where you put something in. And then when I turn it, I actually have one more page and a half actually that I can um, put some more if I want to. But I think all the colors that I purchased with the basic pack and the bonus pack are gonna be plenty enough for me to use and be happy. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my uh, Peerless watercolor tutorial. Um, I will have links on my blog for all of the supplies, the glue and the aqua painters and, and all that stuff if you want to go there. Uh, and you can reach my blog by clicking on the uh, YouTube description link in there. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you with the next video.